Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to another YouTube video. Now what I got for you today is a game that I am playing at the exact same time as I'm giving commentary to it. So be prepared for me making tons of mistakes because I'm trying to talk and play at the same time. I'm since since I am a dude, I, I you know, I well at least last time I checked. I, I had a hard time. I have a hard time, you know, doing two things at once. Am I real? I, I think so. Uh I, I, I think so. I'm pretty sure I'm real. I'm playing my main account right now. I got a lot of people asking whether or not I'm the real loco, which is kind of funny because I don't know if there's any... Oh, that's really sweet. Thank you, dude. <laughs> that's really sweet. Um, I, I don't know if there's any fake locos out there on the ladder, although I have heard rumors. Apparently, there was one guy who played under the loco nickname, like also in, in higher level gameplay, and he would BM and rage quit every single match. <laughs> and people would like send me screenshots on Twitter and whatnot saying like loco. Why would you do this? Why would you like say all these mean things? It's like well, it wasn't wasn't me wasn't me um, My opponent is currently hugging my gas makes me a little scared usually that means they kind of want to try and take it um, I've had a lot of protos has actually recently cheesed me with like you know immortals and like all kinds of shield batteries and whatnot near my natural mineral line I don't know how many of you have encountered that if anyone has let me know down below in the comment section I found a great way of dealing with it like I would say about 90% of the time I can make a separate video about that where I call for that new kind of print F kind of cheese so basically what they do is they kind of rush it but then they take it to the next level by also Transitioning to watch the uh, robotics facility and then they go immortals and they juggle it with a prism and they've got shield batteries And you basically slowly die. It's a painful experience I lost to it many times over the last few weeks, but I think I finally found something that works quite well against it anyways um, I've got myself my hatcheries right now done I'm gonna go ahead and make a group of zerklings and of course in Zerg vs. Protoss It's all about figuring out how many workers I can get away with looks like it's a standard fast expo for my opponent I'm gonna go ahead and pull some drones out of the gas and I'll be looking to take a third here in just a bit. Could be a stalker. Many of uh, many of the games I played out, it's not really going to be a stalker at this point. A lot of people open up adept, mostly because as soon as the zerklings are out, it's hard to scout with the probe. And obviously, you do need to confirm whether or not zerk takes a third base. So usually, Protoss players do transition towards an adept rather early on. There we go. Gonna lay down a tumor. Third base is already up. I'm gonna make a couple more links here just to be safe. Still not seeing a stalker. Gonna try and fly towards this uh, this pylon over here, and I will start looking for another pylon out on the map. No Stargate or whatever to be seen here just yet. We would expect one here, right around this time. So there's the adept. Hive cluster under direct assault. We'll go ahead and attack this uh, this unit for just a bit. If I can actually get this around, that'd be wonderful. I don't think I'm gonna get the kill. Cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. There is a Stargate now coming up. So let's go ahead and continue making drones. And we'll get another queen in that natural as well. So it is a Phoenix actually first. Could have seen that. Not the biggest of deal. It's always um, it's always okay to have the spores. It does mean that there's a chance he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna go for an Oracle right now. There's a chance he's just gonna follow this up with more units. Does mean I have to be a little bit careful. Now that Overlords will be, uh, you know, first targets for my opponent. He wants to try and kill those as soon as possible. This base will finish up. I'm gonna make a spore over here too. And basically just rallying my overlords right now towards my own spore crawlers. Could go for a bit of a push here if I really want to, but at this point I'm really trying to try- I'm really trying to get a lot of workers out. So my main goal right now is to try and max out saturation. And to try and figure out what my opponent's follow-up is going to be. So I'm expecting a third base within the next minute or so. I've already got a Roach Warn coming up. Roach Warn and Lair will finish up right around the same time, so I can start up the Roach Speed upgrade. We'll saturate the gas over here. And I'm actually gonna make a group of links right now, because I don't really know what's exactly what exactly is going on. There is, of course, the Spore here, so it's okay. He did end up doing a nice little one-two punch there. Got himself a couple of worker kills, which is nice. Roach Warn is done. I'm gonna put down one more Tumor over in this area. And we're gonna start making a bunch of roaches right now. So if he doesn't take a third, right about this time, I'm still expecting one in just about 10 seconds. He's likely gonna go for some sort of two base play, right? If he's not going for three base play, he's likely gonna go for two base play, and usually the latest to take a third is five minutes. 
So having that vision out on the map is really nice. I'm rallying once again towards the individual mineral lines, primarily because I need to figure out if there's going to be Archons or something along those lines. There we go, 5 minute third. There is a, a Warp Prism now also moving across. Okay, I think I'm actually going to go for a big push. I made a lot of drones here, I didn't lose a lot. I'm actually going to go and commit to an attack with Roaches and Speed. This is going to be a little bit of a risk, I do need to deal damage with it. So, I was already making roaches to try and deal with a immortal drop, or rather an Archon drop, that I haven't scouted. I saw it just now, right? But it's it's just a very common follow-up. I was already making roaches, just in case. So what if I just go for a big push with Zerklings, Ravages, and Roaches? Watch the prism. Miss the prism. Oh, there it is. Okay. Don't want to lose that tumor, so that's good. Now, I do need to shoo away this prism first. But I've got more than enough units. Roach speed is done. I'm rallying all my new roaches right now towards the mineral line. There's an observer right now, too. I'm gonna rally my roaches towards the third. Hoping that's gonna be a little bit of a better spot. Other than that, I'm just gonna make a big move across the map. So my opponent is now committed, right? We know that he's committed to a pretty big push across the map. The prism is there too. There's two Archons in that thing. It's pretty strong. If I can pick up this Immortal... That's one of his main damage dealers right at this point. Okay. Second Robo coming up for him. Which is fair. Gotta go ahead and send some Roaches into the Manor line over here too. We'll be able to pick up quite a lot of units here. Still harassing all of his mineralize at once. And this is a pretty, like, low commitment push by me, right? It's almost always gonna be guaranteed to deal some damage. Might very well be able to do critical damage, and my opponent just GG's out. So, let's look at the replay and discuss as to why we won. Now, for those of you curious, by the way, my opponent was a 5.2k Master 1 level player. And my APM, I know people always ask, my APM in that match was 319. Alright, so even though that wasn't like the most epic back and forth Zerk vs. Protoss of, of your life, right? It's it's one of those games that I'm I'm pretty proud of when I can execute it. Because it's it's very clean. I don't really think I made any major mistakes this game, although I could have been a little bit more aggressive with my droning. Alright, so let's let's talk about that for just a little bit. So this is a very standard textbook style of Zerk vs. Protoss right here. So basically, my early game was just defend, 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 don't take any damage, and then eventually push across the map once I realize what it is my opponent is doing. Now, the most common style that Protoss is playing right now is Stargate into third base into Archon Drop. He was a little bit late with the Archon Drop, it felt like. I'm not entirely sure as to why that was. Um, he also didn't follow it up with any kind of adept shenanigans, which is also very common these days. Um, but regardless, um, it's basically just a very straightforward match of Zerg versus Protoss. So I made my uh, my, my, myself a handful of Zerglings here in the early game, just so I can deflect the very first adept that comes across the map. Sometimes the second one joins in as well. Usually link speed will be done by the time that that one can be a nuisance. I scout in the main base with my very first Overlord that is a Stargate play. So at this point, I'm just droning up. I'm just trying to play a very normal game as well. But I know that if there's, you know, a Stargate, I don't need to worry about a War Prism just yet. If there's gonna be a Stargate, I don't have to worry about Glyph the Depths just yet. For now, I am pretty much safe as long as I get a couple of Queens, a couple of Spores, and then a bunch of Drones as well. Now notice this right here. I do hit a bit of a Supply Block. And that's a, that's, that's a big deal. I mean, I am supposed to be up to like 40 Drones right now already, and instead I'm sitting at this awkward 33 Drone count. Um, one of the things that I personally um, underestimated for a very long time is the, the power of uh, Chrono Boost. <laughs> it sounds silly, but my opponent is just happily making probes non-stop. And he's got more workers than I do, by a significant margin too, right? So this is something that I really need to work on. And, and considering like my opponent hasn't really messed with me, I shouldn't be hitting those supply blocks. Now, I've got the excuse that I'm recording and playing at the same time, so, you know, maybe that's gonna be kind of... Kind of allowed in a way, I do let, uh, I do end up losing two drones there, but it's nothing all too major. But I definitely could have had more workers out already. Alright, now a very normal follow-up from the Stargate play is gonna be that robotics drop play. 
The reason why I I um, I, I pro like I, I made the assumption that my opponent went for the War Prism with the Archons is because I see the timing of the third base. It's very common for a Stargate base player to take their third base, say, four minutes into the game. However, if they take the third base at the five minute mark, which is what my opponent has essentially done here, I know for a fact that he was spending like a minute or so making additional tech. Right? And if that's the case, it's pretty much always going to be a Robo, and it's pretty much always going to be a Twilight Council, a Templar Archives, as well as a bunch of additional gateways. So if I know that it's delayed by a minute, I can pretty much guarantee that it is going to be a um, uh, an Archon drop. Like, it's pretty much always going to be the case. You can see that right here in the main base. He went for the Stargate into the third base at five minutes, and even though I haven't really scouted after that first one died, I or after that first overload died, I, I knew the timing of the third, so I could sort of start to, you know, cross the different builds that Protosses can go for off of like a little mental checklist. Anyway, so I was already making um, roaches before this happened, just in case of a depth or just in case of a bunch of units. I could I could do one of two things right now. I could go back to droning, because I know I've got this Archon shenanigans coffered. I mean, I've got 14, uh, 14 roaches, which is more than enough to deflect two Archons, even if he decides to warp in a bunch of zealots. Or, and this is something I've been doing a lot more recently, I can go for an all-out assault right when Roach Speed finishes. And this is a super basic push. You basically just move across the map right when your Roach Speed finishes up, and that's about it. Now, upon realizing that my opponent made an Observer, I know he's got, you know, basically half an Immortal less, because the Observer could have been an, uh, an Immortal as well. So I just move across the map. I have all of my Rally Points right now off the bases. So you can see the Rally Point right here, the white one. Uh, ready to watch the mineral line. I have that for all bases. So basically that's just in case my opponent decides to send the war prism to watch one of them. I'm, I'm having my reinforcements go into that direction. But in the meantime, I'm moving across the map. Upon realizing that the war prism is also moving back, I owe a army hotkey here. So I use the army hotkey there to my advantage, rather than my main way of hotkeying the army. I know there's a lot of you that use the old army hotkey as your only way. And then we just flooded the map. I just sent my units in every direction. And all of a sudden my opponent while significantly ahead economically, had to um, he had to deal with a, a really big chunk of roaches in every mineral line. And while he did decently well there initially, we kill worker after worker after worker. And obviously, before he was able to clean this up, if he was going to be able to clean this up in the first place, um, he would be taking critical amounts of damage. So very clean game there, all things considered. I, I really like that. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as well. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. Special shout out to the Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile all right, and I will see you in the next one.